This Battlefield Report will cover the events of the Second Intergalactic War from March 31st to April 6th. We go first to the Automaton Front, where last week Operation Swift Disassembly was well underway with the goal of liberating Tibet, the local automaton manufacturing hub. Ubenea was nearly secured by Sunday night, but the bots, sensing their impending shutdown, counterattacked at Dropnir threatening to cut off the faster-than-light travel route and supply line and derail the entire operation. With the outcome hanging in the balance, the Ubenea Gambit was born. 35% of Super Earth Armed Forces would hold the Terminated Front, 20% would see to the defense of Dropnir, and the rest would commit to taking Ubenea. But thousands of squadrons would stubbornly remain on Malevolon Creek, and a manpower shortage would soon develop. Ultimately, the Gambit was unsuccessful. Drop near fell, and the operation to take Ubenea had to be postponed when the planet was 95% liberated. However, the majority of Helldivers took to the reconquest of Dropnir, which succeeded the following day. And with residual control over Ubenea only decaying to around 83%, the planet was again peppered with Hellpods, and Helldivers secured the planet by Sunday afternoon. With only hours left to go on the major order, Helldivers moved on to Tibet in a last-ditch effort to take the planet in time before the bots could relocate their heavy industry off-world. But Tibet proved to be a planet too far, and the order was declared a failure as heavy bot reinforcements arrived on the battlefield on Monday morning. Back at Malevolon Creek, the grueling fight for control of the planet was ongoing. Control over the world had slowly increased to around 85% over the past 17 days. Victory was near, and a new major order was sent out on Monday to make it official. Take back the creek. Victory was finally declared six hours later, and 35 medals were issued out to the fleet. The Creek would be our consolation prize for failing to complete Phase 2 of Operation Swift Disassembly. In a message from Command, quote, At long last, Malevolon Creek is free. The heroes who died in its defense can finally rest in peace, knowing justice has been served. A presidential decree was issued to commemorate April 1st as Malevolon Creek Memorial Day, and a new cape design was issued for the entire force in memory of the 24,926,390 Helldivers that fell on that planet. In the words of our president, quote, At last, dawn breaks upon a free creek. But as our citizens celebrated, the automatons, with their industrial heartland still intact, amassed for a large-scale counterattack not seen since the beginning of the war, and General Brash issued a new major order on Monday as a three-day onslaught began. His words echoed on the lips of Helldivers across the galaxy. Hold your ground. The automaton offensive started on Ubenea on Monday afternoon. Malevolon Creek was invaded on Tuesday. The bots doubled down and attacked Ubenea again on Tuesday. And Vandalon 4 was assaulted on Wednesday. And each invasion was met with a relentless and unyielding force of Helldivers, and not one inch of territory was taken by the automatons. By Thursday morning, Operation Swift Disassembly Phase 3 was declared complete. The automaton counterattack had been defeated. But during these attacks, Helldivers began to encounter new automaton weapons. But luckily, we were forewarned of their arrival after taking the automaton Deep Space Communication Array on Troost last week. The bots have indeed taken to the sky, just like their bug counterparts on the other side of the galaxy. And with the combined aerial threat on both fronts, Command has assured us that deployment of new anti-air weaponry is on the horizon. But in an unexpected turn, the automatons have also developed what we now know as Factory Striders, titanic, four-legged, heavily armored walkers with devastating combat capability. But these appear to be rare, likely due to their immense size and complex construction. Nonetheless, this represents the greatest threat presented by the automatons so far, but nothing can undo the will of the Helldivers, who are already taking notes on how to bring down these colossal bots most efficiently. Despite the delay in the initial timeline, Helldivers still had the momentum on their side. And on Thursday, General Brash issued another major order to drive the final nail in the coffin of the Metal Menace. Operation Swift Disassembly Phase 4 Annihilation. An all-out push to completely destroy the Automaton Legion and prevent the execution of the Reclamation their enigmatic main objective and the reason behind their invasion. The general was crystal clear in his order, quote, destroy the automatons at any cost. 
To succeed, Helldivers would have until early Monday morning to liberate Maya, Tibbet, and Durgan. And after a significant decrease in automaton resistance was noted on these planets, it's clear that the end of the war is near. Maya was secured on Friday afternoon. Tibbet is set to be liberated by Saturday night, leaving only Durgan left to conquer before the major order expires on Monday. Currently, Malevolon Creek and Ubenea are vulnerable to counterattack, so Helldivers must act quickly to secure final victory. And over on the Terminant front, things have not been quiet. With the vast majority of Helldivers participating in the Swift Disassembly campaign, a skeleton crew has been left behind to fend off the advancing bugs. At the end of last week, Fori Prime was under attack, and by Saturday, it had been lost, cutting off FTL and supply lines to Osha Une. Our forces had to be redeployed back to Fori Prime. But then Crimsica was attacked on Monday and lost by Tuesday, and Astanu was thrice attacked this week and lost on the third assault. And with the loss of these two planets, Fori Prime had to be evacuated. At the end of the week, Helldiver forces are holding steady on the last remaining planets in the Marin and Draco sectors, but citizens everywhere can rest assured that the terminated control system on the barrier planets will stem any further bug advancement while Helldiver forces crush the remaining automatons in the west. In other news this week, a division has been created in the Helldiver ranks in the wake of what we now know as the Ubenea blunder. Some blamed the bugfighters for not sufficiently reinforcing the bot front. Others blamed the Creekers for needlessly bleeding manpower on Malevolon Creek during a time of need. Still more blamed those who doubled down on the Ubenea assault instead of seeing to the defense of Dropnir. But ultimately, recent battlefield successes have reunited the core. But one thing is clear. Logistical supply and FDL information should be displayed on Super Destroyer War Tables to help coordinate future battles. And speaking of dissension within the ranks, the Helldiver rank structure has been expanded as the number of veterans within the Corps has grown. New titles include Admirals, Commanders, Generals, and even Super Privates. And much to everyone's appreciation, the promotions are retroactive. Super Earth has announced this week that moving forward, the relocation of citizens to occupied planets will be reduced. Constant evacuation of large numbers of helpless civilians was proving to be a costly burden for the Helldivers. With the constant back and forth battles, reduced colonial populations will serve to increase our defensive capabilities with slightly less collateral damage. And good news is coming out of the Engineering Corps this week as it's been reported that workarounds for hazardous environmental conditions affecting stratagem use have been implemented. Negative effects from complex stratagem plotting and orbital fluctuations have been cut in half and a slew of weapon adjustments have been implemented as well. After solving the issue of arc thrower malfunctions last week, engineers have made the decision to alter the power input to the weapon to make it more stable. This has resulted in reduced range and increased charging time, but a more concentrated burst means increased stagger force, and the weapons feel more powerful than ever. One of the go-to weapons against the automatons, the anti-material rifle, has also seen a massive increase in functionality, High velocity rounds are said to increase its damage output by around 30%, but engineers have acknowledged the misaligned optics on this and several other weapons, and a solution for this is in the works. A new formula for fire accelerant has been developed and should increase the lethality of napalm, flamethrowers, and incendiary weapons, but due to some of the observed vulnerabilities against the automatons, Command has implemented some changes to all armor types. Flame retardant fabric layers have been replaced with thickened padding and hardened alloys to give Helldivers increased resistance to impact and explosions, but reduced effectiveness against open flame. Many Helldivers are calling for the development of fireproof armor that can be issued to flamethrower and incendiary weapon users that give that role higher survivability in the wake of these changes. Additionally, new high power ammunition has increased the damage and stagger effect of the Dominator and the Diligence Counter Sniper Rifle will now use tungsten carbide ammunition to give it medium armor penetration. After a cowardly sabotage raid by partisans on the factory responsible for production of the Slugger shotgun, the combat effectiveness of those weapons will be reduced until further notice. Ammo packaging efficiency for the recoilless rifle, spear, and guard dog ammunition has been increased, 
ammo for these weapons should be easier to come by in combat zones as a result. The ballistic shield has also seen some improvements to its size and contour, giving the user more effective and safe coverage. And finally, manual steering controls are now more reliable in hell pods and should have less chance for autopilot override. But even more firepower is on its way to the battlefield as a new premium war bond has been announced. Deployment is expected on April 11th and will introduce new weapons, armor, and support options, including the BR-14 Adjudicator, an armor-penetrating assault rifle, the R-36 Eruptor, a bolt-action rifle firing jet-assisted fragmentation rounds, the CB-9 crossbow, delivering high-explosive crossbow bolts over short range, the G-123 thermite grenade, sticking to surfaces and burning up to 2,000 degrees Celsius, and the GP-31 grenade pistol, which doesn't require any further description. We'll also see new light, medium, and heavy armor, capes, banners, and even a new booster for the Pelican 1 pilot that will allow for faster exfil even on the toughest assignments. And just over eight weeks into the war, victory in the West is near. The metal menace, which preaches equality under the guise of socialism, has committed unspeakable atrocities to our people. The fallen may be lost, but will never be forgotten. Would you like to know more? 